Hey guys, welcome back, it's Tom B. I'm finally getting back into pottery, but now instead of it being too hot, it's starting to get too cold, which is hilarious. There's only such a small window of time in Los Angeles where it's like pleasant to do pottery. I can't believe it's already December, time has been flying by so quickly lately, so I really need to get on my holiday presents for my family. And of course this year I'm going to be giving out pottery because I can't afford anything else in this economy. And a side note, if you are my family, you're not allowed to watch this video. Or you can watch it, but you have to mute it and tab it. So um, <laughs> no spoilers for you. Also, I just want to say my hair is looking a lot better lately. Before, in my last two videos, I had to wear a headband because my hair was not long enough to like lay down. It just like looked kind of funny, but now it's finally at a point where I'm really liking the length. I've never had hair this long before. Anyways, that's completely besides the point. I want to walk you guys through the entire process of me making these holiday gifts from idea to the finished product. And there are a couple different things that I'm planning on making because people have asked for different things. And I thought I could initially make this all one video, but as I started editing stuff, uh, I quickly started to realize that it was going to be a really long video if I did that, and it would take forever for me to edit. I don't even think my computer can handle that. So I'm going to break this up into little chunks. And first, I'm going to show you these salt cellars that I'm making um, that are kind of shaped like Chinese tea bowls. So yeah, let's take a look at my sketchbook, and I'll show you what I was thinking. Okay, I guess I'm going to start by just like clearing off my desk because it's kind of a mess. But most of all, I want to be realistic. As much as I would love to have my desk and room be entirely clean at all times, it's just not the reality. These are sketches for a project for the beginning of next year, but I kind of want to use the same ideas for the holiday gifts that I'm making. This first batch of gifts is going to be salt cellars. And if you're not used to using salt cellars, it's literally just like a cup with a lid. Sometimes they come with spoons as well so that you can scoop up salt as you're cooking and put it in. I personally just use my fingers, but I figure I might as well include some spoons so you know my family can choose to use it the way that they see fit. The reason why I'm choosing to make salt cellars is because my mom sent me a video a while back of a pottery studio in Italy where she's currently living and they were making salt cellars with little spoons and she was like, I want that. And I figured I might as well make more than one to give to my aunts and uncles and kind of knock out more birds. So obviously I'm not going to copy exactly what that Italian pottery studio did and I love to make it a bit of my own style. And lately I've been thinking a lot about Chinese traditional pottery. And in particular, I'm thinking about this Chinese tea bowl called a gaiwan, which literally just means lid bowl or lidded bowl. And this kind of bowl is different from a typical Japanese chawan, which is a matcha bowl. The matcha bowl is larger because it's made for whisking the powdered tea. However, the Chinese gaiwan is for loose leaf tea. So you put the loose leaf tea in, you pour the hot water on top, you let the tea steep, and then you use the lid to strain out the leaves as you pour into another cup to drink. Obviously, it's not going to have the same purpose here, but I would love to just use that form. So the shape of a gaiwan is typically something along the lines of this, a shallow bowl with a kind of flared lip, a small foot, and then the lid is also relatively shallow with a handle on top. Something kind of like this. And I want to turn this into a salt cellar instead, which really isn't going to take that much. But pretty much instead of having the lid just be solid like this, which would ordinarily be used for filtering out tea leaves, I'm just going to cut a small notch into the lid once it's thrown. That way a spoon can rest inside of the bowl at all times. So this is the general form, but it requires multiple pieces to be made. Of course, I need to make the bowl, which is the first part, and then I need to make the lid, a second part, and then I also need to make some kind of spoon. Hopefully it looks better than this. And I honestly don't have that much practice with making pottery that have 
so many pieces that need to fit together like this. This is gonna be a challenge, but we're gonna do it together and I think it's gonna be fine. So I guess this is the plan and I'm probably gonna do it in this order with the bowls, the lids, and then the spoons. So let's head on over to the garage and we can get started with throwing. Okay, to be completely honest with you guys, I did not really know how I was going to structure this video. Obviously, I want to show you guys how I made these salt cellars, but I also want to give you guys a little bit of insight into my process and what it's like being a potter. So overall, I think the rest of this video is going to be pretty low-key and the pottery is pretty chill. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, get cozy, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing, it really helps me out. But anyways, after I finished cleaning up a bit, I started to prepare my clay. The first thing that we have to do is wedge. And I think that wedging is probably not the favorite activity of a lot of potters because it actually requires a lot of physical effort, um, but it's actually a really important part of doing pottery. So when you wedge the clay, you're trying to get out any air bubbles that might be stuck inside the clay. And you're also trying to make sure that the moisture levels is even throughout the entire piece of clay. Both of those things, the air bubbles and the evenness of the moisture inside, are going to end up affecting how you throw your clay. Because if there's an air bubble or some amount of unevenness when you're throwing, it's really going to screw you up. I try to spend a pretty good amount of time doing this. I think it's worse if you didn't wedge enough and you realize it while you're throwing and you end up having to take clay that's even more wet than it was before and then try to re-wedge it. So it's better to just get it done right in the first place because it's just a waste of time if you don't. So here I am measuring out how much clay I'm going to be using for the bowls. I like to measure the clay out so that I have a general idea of how much clay that I'm using and then it makes it a lot easier to make sure all of the bowls are either the same size or really close to the same size. And even though it isn't really my goal to become a production potter who's making like 50 mugs a day or more, I think it's really nice to just practice this as a skill. I'm thinking about doing some markets starting next year and I think it would just be kind of nice to have a few shapes that I can make really consistently. That way people always pretty much know what they're getting and I also don't have to spend a ton of time photographing every single piece and uploading them as individual items to my website. So even before I can start throwing at all, you can see there's a ton of prep. I have to prepare the clay, I have to get water, and now, in order to make things a little bit easier for myself, I'm putting on some bat pins. And this is pretty much just like a nut and bolt that goes onto the actual pottery wheel. And then I can put this piece of absorbent wood type thing on top and that way it makes it easier for me to lift pottery up off the wheel without deforming it. This is the most useful when the thing that you're making is either kind of wide or really thin. And I definitely want to throw them pretty thin because I want to minimize the amount of time that I spend trimming them. The great thing about throwing with this little amount of clay is that it's pretty easy to get to the final result that I want. I can pretty much center the clay in less than 30 seconds and then in total it probably takes me less than 4 minutes to throw one of these bowls. And I think for the longest time I had a lot of trouble with throwing quickly but part of it was because in between pieces I would clean off my hands, I would check my phone, I would talk to people when I was still going to the community studio. I'm super distractible so it was easy to kind of get sidetracked when I was working on stuff. But for these bowls at least, I was able to throw them pretty quickly just because I knew that I had like a time limit. Because the holidays are coming up super soon, I need to get these into the kiln two times, so it's going to take a while until these are finished. I want to show you guys what it's like to throw pottery in real time, so I didn't make any cuts on this section, it's not sped up. This is just how long it takes me to throw one of these bowls.
And I think this is one of the pots from earlier on in this throwing session, so as time went on, it got a lot easier and faster to throw these. And I'm just trying to spend some extra time making sure I get all the details that I want in right now because I don't want to spend very much time trimming these. Look at that fancy cut. <laughs> okay, so that's how I throw the bowl portion of these salt cellars. And then I'm going to show you guys how I throw the lid. So instead of measuring out a ton of tiny, tiny balls of clay, I decided to throw these off the hump. And this is a technique that a lot of production potters use to throw really quickly. You take a larger piece of clay than you need and then you only throw with the top part. And this can cut down on time that you spend on clay prep, on cleaning up in between throws, so it really is a little bit more efficient. As you can see here, I'm just throwing with the top bit of the clay and I'm basically throwing a really tiny bowl. Except with the walls, I'm just pulling them out more and more until they're almost flat basically, and that's going to be the lid. So once I have the correct width that I want, I am going to take my fingers and start to pinch off the bottom, making sure that there's enough clay there so that I can trim a handle out of it. And once that's done, that is it for all of the pieces that need to be thrown. And we're just going to wait for these to dry a little bit and then we'll trim them. I used to have such an aversion to trimming because for a while that was where I used to destroy most of my pieces just by trimming through the bottom or through the walls. And I would just get so frustrated because, you know, you spend so much time working on a project and you feel like you really love the way that it looks. And of course, it's just really sad to lose that, but I feel like trimming over time was one of my skills that improved the most. And most of that is just because you are building your intuition over time, and part of that intuition is about knowing when to trim, when the clay is at the correct dryness for you to trim. And as you can see here, the clay is coming off in these like single ribbons, which is pretty much exactly what you want. I think when I was just starting out, I would accidentally let things get too dry and it would just be like dust flying off. And not only is that like terrible for trimming, but it's also terrible for your lungs. So please do not trim dry clay unless you absolutely have to. And if you do have to, then try not to do it in a community setting. And if you're by yourself, then make sure to wear a mask. So because I threw the top so thinly and it was already pretty much the shape that I wanted, I only had to trim the bottom, which saves a lot of time. And after trimming all the bottoms, I finally got to use my brand new stamp that I spent way too much time designing. But honestly, I'm glad I spent that much time on it because I'm really happy with the result. I love my new logo. I think it looks so cute. It has that pear shape that I love to throw for my vases. And yeah, I think it just really captures my essence as an artist. One of the best things that I've made since I started my pottery studio was definitely this damp box, which is just like a plastic bin with a bunch of plaster poured into the bottom. And this bin has saved me so many times because the weather in LA is so dry. Sometimes pieces will crack, sometimes they will just not dry evenly and that will screw you up when you're trimming. Especially for stuff like these lids where the bottom of the lid is like super thin but the top has a lot of clay. It just doesn't dry evenly normally so I stuff them all into this box and that way they dried to an even consistency and it was a lot easier for me to trim them. So 
Since I threw these off the hump, there's quite a bit of material to trim off here, but I think it's pretty satisfying. And they fit so nicely on top of the bowls I already made. Uh, they're looking pretty much just like Gaiwan now, but as I mentioned earlier, it's time to cut a little notch into the side of the lids so that I can fit a spoon in there. This is pretty delicate work just because of how thin the lids are, in addition to the fact that the clay still needs to be a little bit wet in order for me to cut through it. So I just try to be super, super careful when I do this, and then I clean it up with a sponge afterwards just to smooth out the edges. And the last thing that we have to do is make the spoons, and this is going to be a little bit different because I've never tried making spoons before. So I'm just sort of making this up as I go. I started out by rolling out these little logs of clay, and then I'm just going to let them sit out for a bit to firm up before I start to attach them because if they're too soft, it makes it really hard to attach pieces together without deforming either side. And then now I'm rolling out a bunch of balls and these are going to become the round part of the spoon. And I'm just going to pinch these until they turn into the shape of a spoon. And then to join the two pieces together, I wasn't able to capture very good footage because the pieces are so small. But basically, I'm just trying to rough up the edges where the pieces are supposed to attach to each other. And then I use some watered down clay called slip to sort of glue them together. After they're attached, I just spend a little bit of time smoothing everything out and that's pretty much it. This is how all the pieces fit together, and I'm super happy with how this turned out. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get to glazing these in this video, because I haven't even decided how I'm going to decorate these, and Christmas is in less than three weeks. So I gotta get started thinking on that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, and also subscribe if you haven't already. I've got more chill pottery videos, chill plant videos coming up, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your day and thank you guys so much for watching.